What's good fam, in today's video we're going to be creating that animation. It's going to be extremely quick and easy, so let's get straight into that. All right, so we're back in the software. Let me just show you the comp settings. Today, we're going to work with the horizontal comp. I'm going to hit OK. And all you need to do is just go to the description and download the assets I prepared for you. So what we got there are basically the tools from After Effects and you got the numbers. So all we need to do is just select number one and drag it to the left. And we're just going to place it in the right order. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a movement. So for this, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hit Alt Shift P. So that way we got a keyframe for position. I'm going to move it forward and then we're just going to bring the tools from the left. I'm going to select everything again, hit F9 and I'm going to go to the graph editor. Here, what we want to do is just create a peak on the left. Now we need to offset the keyframes and it'd be wonderful if it was After Effects beta because we would be able to do it very fast. But since we don't have it, we have to do it manually. So basically we're gonna go from the top and we're gonna offset it by one or two frames. So that way we get a nice smooth animation and I'm just gonna place our playhead over here. I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna click on the keyframe again. So now what we could do is basically select everything apart from the number eight. So I'm just going to drag it lower like that. I'm going to add a graph to this. So I'm going to head over here. We can actually hit F9 for this. And we're just going to drag that yellow dot over here to the right. Really nice output. I just speed it up a bit. And now we're going to do pretty much the same thing over here. So we're going to offset it all by two frames. Okay, so that's what we got. And now it's for the last one for number eight. We're just going to put it in the middle. So for this, I'm going to open up action save and let's do it like that. All right. We can use one of the graphs. Let's say mid graph. Let's extend the movement. And now from this moment, we're just going to be playing around with number eight. So for this, we can select everything over here. I'm going to trim the layers and also we can use the shy icon and we're just going to turn them off, actually hide them. So now we need a shape. So for this, I'm going to go to the rectangle tool. And we're just going to create something like that. I'm going to recenter and actually put it a bit higher. Now with the pen, we're going to be creating that rectangle. So let's make sure to turn on stroke. I'm going to use a bit darker color over here. Let's hit OK. And we can rename it to frame. Now for the number eight, we need to create a new new object. I'm going to rename it to pen controller and I'm going to place the playhead over here and we're just going to parent number eight to the null. So now we can create a keyframe for position and also for rotation. I'm going to hit you over here for reference and we're just going to place the keyframes over here in order to remain the momentum. So now what we want to do is play around with rotation just like so and move to the left bottom corner. We can actually place the frame below our number eight and we can try to have the top on the corner. Okay, now I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna apply the mid graph. Here you have it. Let's see. I think we could speed up the movement a bit. And now what we wanna do is create a new null object. I'm gonna rename it to pen controller tool. I'm gonna make sure to grab that tool. I'm gonna grab the anchor point and let's put it right over here on the top of our pen tool. Now let's parent number one to number two and let's keyframe position and rotation. I'm gonna put the keyframes over here and we're gonna move to the top right corner. Let's move it like that. And now let's play around with rotation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mid graph and let's see the whole movement. Okay, this is extremely fast, so let's slow it down. And also something that would be pretty cool here is start the rotation earlier. So I'm just gonna drag that keyframe to the back. And let's see now, maybe even more. Yeah, more natural. So now I'm gonna go to frame. I'm gonna keyframe size. I'm gonna uncheck constraint proportions and I'm gonna keyframe the position for the layer. So let's hit you. And now we're gonna align these keyframes with the last ones over here. So let's go ahead and do that. When the pen is having the movement across, we're gonna grow that rectangle. So for this, I'm gonna definitely squeeze it in in X. Now let's move the position and we kind of want to have that middle on top of our pen tool. Okay, now we can change Y to zero and let's see if it works. Just before that, we're gonna apply the mid graph. Okay, it looks really nice. 
I'm just thinking about one adjustment. Probably putting these keyframes one frame further is gonna be better. Yep, I like it. I know you all wanna see it. Let's turn on the motion blur. Okay, that's nice. And here you wanna grab the type tool and we're just gonna type in subscribe. Make sure to subscribe. Then I'm gonna recenter the anchor point and put it somewhere here and let's align horizontally. So now what we could do is duplicate frame. I'm gonna rename it to cover and make sure to turn off the stroke over here. So now we can go to the subscribe button. I'm gonna hit F4 in order to go to modes and we're gonna change the track mat to cover. So that way we're gonna be able to reveal the text together with the frame. Let's just see that. So that's pretty cool. So you can either use that or just add some text animation. I'm gonna go for MB06 blink. Then probably something cool would be just going to the frame. I'm gonna open it up, go to contents, rectangle, fill, and we're just gonna change the opacity to 30%. We might also wanna change the stroke width to like maybe two. All right, now we need to pre-compose the whole thing. So I'm just gonna click on the shy icon. I'm gonna select it all, right click, go to pre-compose. We can call it all. And we're just gonna start the second part of the animation. But for this, we need a new camera. So I'm just gonna go over here. We're gonna grab 35 millimeter preset. I'm gonna hit okay. Let's create a new new object and we're gonna rename it to cam control. I'm gonna part in the camera to the null. I'm gonna select both, definitely change the color. And I'm gonna drag it below all. Let's turn on the 3D on everything and we need some more assets. So essentially what we need to do now is just grab the hand tool and this is the number two. So let's put it on the timeline and I'm just gonna turn it into 3D and now I'm gonna create a keyframe for position and also opacity. I'm gonna drag the opacity forward. I'm gonna change it to zero. And now we kind of wanna go lower with this. So now we can also create keyframes for position in our all layer. I'm gonna align it with these ones and we need to drag it lower. So it's kind of in the middle. I'm gonna probably have the opacity keyframes over here. I'm gonna easy ease them. And this is pretty cool, but it's definitely gotta be a bit later. Even more. Pretty cool, but let's use the mid graph for these four. Now I'm gonna drag it a bit earlier and we're just gonna fade it in a bit earlier as well. I'm just thinking maybe having a bit more extended movement for the hand tool would look a bit better. Yeah. All right, so what we want to grab now is essentially number five. I'm gonna drop it on the timeline and this tool actually allows you to change the position just like so. So what we're gonna do is turn it into 3D. I'm gonna place it closer to the camera, somewhere on the bottom. And essentially what we wanna do with this tool is create keyframes for opacity to nicely fade it in. And then we're gonna bring it from the left with position keyframes, just like so. Okay, this is definitely too close. So for this, I'm gonna select both of them, drag it a bit closer to the camera, a bit lower, and we should be good with this. I'm just gonna apply a nice graph over here. Okay, this is very really smooth. We're gonna adjust the timing, also pass the keyframes. And now what I would like to do is overlap the keyframes for number five. So I'm gonna create a new new object. I'm gonna rename it to five controller and I'm gonna turn on the 3D. I'm gonna parent five to five controller and we're gonna create keyframes for position over here. And then make sure to set one in the cam control one. I'm gonna move forward and we wanna move away just like so. So whenever you use that tool and you drag out, you can notice that it goes down. So we kinda wanna imitate that. So let's go ahead and change Z position and also Z position in our five controller. Okay, something like that should do. I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna apply the mid graph and I'm gonna squeeze in the keyframes. Okay, really nice. I'll probably zoom out even more and then this as well. Okay, extremely sharp. I'm gonna slow it down. And this should be good enough. All right, now I'm gonna select everything over here and also the position keyframes in our cam control one and I'm gonna offset it because I feel like it comes in a bit too early. That's better. And now essentially what you could do is just grab some of the tools from here. So I'm gonna take one, three, four, six, and seven. I'm gonna drop it on the timeline, turn on the 3D. I'm gonna hit P and move it closer to the camera. All right, that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna put it in random positions. 
I'm gonna move it a bit away and we can have it actually in different positions so it's not all the same. That way we're gonna get that nice depth. You can play around with rotation, orientation, that's fine as well. Let's maybe replace these two. Okay, let's see now. I'm just gonna select them all, hit P and move them a bit closer. Let's see now. Yeah, a bit better. All right, now I'm gonna head over to the camera. I'm gonna go to camera options and we're gonna turn on the depth of field. Here I'm gonna set the aperture to 150 and we can actually create a keyframe, move back and change it to zero. So we kind of wanna blur out everything over here. So I'm just gonna make sure the timing is right. Okay, so here's the zoom out effect. So we need to kind of activate that depth of field around this time. Okay, too early. That's really good. I'm gonna go to the second view. And here what you want to do is make sure that the focus distance, which is the rectangle over here, is set on our subscribe button. So if we look at it from the side, we're gonna be able to align it perfectly. All right, let's see now. I feel like 150 is a bit too much, so we're just gonna change it to 50. So just a little blur. I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch for point of interest and I'm gonna type in wiggle one comma, let's say 12. So this is gonna give us that extra wiggle and make the whole scene a bit more realistic. One thing though, I feel like this movement is a bit too fast, too sharp. So for this, I'm just gonna extend these two keyframes just a bit and we're gonna adjust the aperture. Let's see now. So now what we're gonna do is head over to new, pick the solid and we're gonna change the color kind of black or gray. Let's hit okay. I'm gonna hit okay again, drop it below everything. I'm gonna rename it to BG. And then on top, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer. Here we're gonna add vignette effect and let's bump it up. Okay, this is starting to look really nice. I don't really like that color bending over here, so we could probably change it with the bits per channel. But what I'm gonna do is hit Ctrl Shift Y for the background. I'm gonna set it to even darker color. So this is gonna be less visible now. Okay, that vignette is doing a really great job here. I'm gonna bump up the amount a bit. And now we could probably nicely loop it. So for this, I'm gonna duplicate Cam Control 1, hit U. Delete the last keyframe, I'm gonna hit you over here. Let's set the keyframe in the middle and we're gonna parent one to two and I'm gonna move lower, okay? Let's use the mid graph again. This is too fast. All right, I think we need to move even lower because of the hand tool. And I'm just gonna click N over here. Let's see it on the loop. Yeah, that's very nice. All right, this is a very nice animation. Obviously, you could spice it up with the light sweep or the deep glow or things like that, or with the posterized time. But I think we're gonna wrap it up here. It was an extremely easy animation. Hopefully, all of you were able to follow along. And yeah, make sure to check out the video on the screen, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.